If I use that campfire, then it's over. Oh, there's a guy. It's a... Uh... It's, it's a ranger, no? It's a fighter, I think. So we take our time, we, take, we drink that potion, we bait that. We invade. We go forward, we look behind us. Oh, I can chill. And he's done. Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to this video. Today, I'm gonna explain to you why move speed is not important on Solo Wizard. So, why I decided to make this video? Um, I got many questions from uh, like a new wizard or like other players that ask me why I don't build move speed. Usually, I see them asking me why do I only have 300 move speed? which means I have 290 move speed book out. So I also don't run any kiting tools like haste or invis, uh, sorry, uh, haste in ice boat or slow. And uh, they, they don't know like how I'm uh, surviving against people who rush me like fighter or like goblin. But that's a pretty easy answer because I believe that wizard is not a kiting class. It's a DPS class and our best tool to kite people is to kill them, is damage. If he's dead, he's gonna he's cannot push you, right? Also, this is why when I can chill, I can chill. Is a really powerful uh, ability. It gives you 15 shield with 0 0.5 scaling on your magical power, and five damage on the explosion with one scaling. The explosion damage scales with your magic power, your true damage, additional damage, and the weapon you're holding in your hand when it explodes. So usually it's gonna be the book which makes this ability so fucking strong against melee, but also against range matchup like ranger or like wizard. So let's take a look at the intro clip I've showed you guys uh, earlier. Right here, the fighter is eating one fireball uh, on the feet. And then I push and I zap him. I know I can push him because I hear him loading his bow, which means he doesn't have his weapon, uh, his sword in hand, so he cannot push me. Then I zap him twice, first time here, and then when he will sprint on me. After he sprint on me, he has no weapon in his hand. So I jump back, pop Arcane Shield mid-air, and I'm ready to magic missile. But the thing is like he's already low HP. He's taking so much damage from the splash fireball and the two zap. He's probably like 40, like 40 or 30% HP. So from this point, he's never gonna beat me in a 1v1 missile battle. And he's done. And now I can already hear you guys telling me that this is a plate fighter, we counter them, so it's it's easy. He it doesn't show anything. Oh, hold on. So now I'm gonna show you a barbarian clip. A, f a legendary bodish barbarian with double grimy and with magic prot. Flash him. Oh, flash myself. Oh my god, I thought I was dead here. Body, she's always so fucking scary. I need to be careful this mosquito rogue. Brother, what the hell are you guys bringing into the dungeon? Double bodish? Look behind me, maybe this mosquito rogue is here. And I want you guys also to understand that in this clip, I'm not running that much more damage than you guys. If you look at my kit, my damage is based on 7 true damage, which can be built by anyone with like a thousand gold. Like a ring with one true is like 150. A cloak is 200. A choker is like 
like 200 at max for like a blue one. And a heart with true is like 200 too. So it's not that expensive to build damage. If you look at my magic power, it's not that high. It's 35%. So book out, I'm probably like 40%, right? The only difference I have with like budget kit and my kit is that I have a lot of HP, a lot of HP. But in that fight, I still had like 30 to 40 HP left. So that wouldn't have mattered that much compared to a budget kit. So anyone with a decent kit with true damage and decent gas speed can beat anything. It's just like you have less HP. So in like more critical situation, you'll die and I'll survive because I have more HP. But beside that, anyone can do it. So um, let's take a look now at what happens if you really decide to build move speed. Usually people go for light foots, so I got some light foots as an example here with max surf and move speed. So I drop them for against like my boots. And usually they also go for loose trousers with knowledge and HP to balance up what they lose on. So by doing this, I'm only 31 knowledge compared to 39 before, and I'm 312 move speed, which is not even that much higher. I lost a lot of MDR and PDR as you can see. If I put them back, I have 30%, 30%. If I drop them, I lose 6% PDR and 4% MDR. That's one thing. But that's not it. One thing uh, usually they do to compensate for that uh, low gas speed is like they go for like uh, uh, a ring of wisdom. So look, this is what they usually do. So they do like this. So right now, they, I'm back to 38 knowledge, so where I started, like a bit less than where I started, but I lost 14 HP from where I started. And on top of the move speed, uh, that's not that great because you lose a lot of stats. Move speed is not good in some situation. Let's take a rogue landmine situation. Move speed is not going to save you because he just landmine you, he three stabs you and you're dead. But if you have more PDR and more HP, you have a bit of time to trade back with the sword or magic missile. Also, against rangers and wizard. Move speed is not that important besides like helping you dodge a bit faster. If you take two hours in the head, you're gonna die anyway. And move speed is not saving you. Same for like uh, a wizard matchup where you have uh, to face tank the zap or like the fireball splash. And who has the most damage will usually win and the most HP. For the rest, uh, kiting is uh, also really dangerous in solo because fights last a long time if you don't want to commit to missile all-in and you can easily get full party. So this is why I like going all-in against someone, finish the fight and quickly reset before I get engaged uh, by another player who just joined the module uh, we were in. So to go back to the first clip I showed in the video, right after I killed the fighter and I camped, a rogue third partied me. If I didn't finish the fight fast enough, he could have killed me uh, without letting me the time to reset and campfire. Luckily, I was able to end the fight pretty fast because fireball can be heard in like really far modules. So I hope in this video I was able to convince you and to make it clear, clearer like why I don't build move speed. And I believe all the players shouldn't rely that much on guiding. Uh, but more about spacing. The spacing is really important. I'm not saying that move speed is a dead stat, but you don't need to invest that much stats into move speed and lose that much HP and knowledge. Also, move speed is one of the most expensive stats in the game. So for you, uh, for your budget, is not gonna go, go good.